Hi, I'm Scott Alley, the Editor-in-Chief at Dark Horse Comics, and I'm here with David Mack, the creator of Kabuki, the creator of Dream Logic, and the cover artist of Fight Club 2. The library editions of Kabuki, the, the new format which matches this format for Dream Logic, what do you like about seeing the work in this format? You know, I've, I've seen it in, in different formats for the last 20 years. It's like seeing it for the first time for me in a way. The, the level of production value of this book, the way it printed, and just the scale. Um, I like to be surprised, you know, mm -hmm. by the book. Uh, and so we're going to do the Kabuki Library Editions, the same format, and it's going to be fascinating to see it, number one, at this scale, at this size, that nobody's ever seen it before. Right. And then we get to collect these things that were originally done 20 years ago, literally 20 years ago. I was so young when I, was do when I started the Kabuki stuff. When I look back at it now, I see a very personal story. I, I see like a young man making sense of a lot of stuff in my life that I wasn't completely conscious of at the time. But in my, in what I loved was like autobiographical type books, you right. know, like uh, um, Art Crumb books mm -hmm. and uh, Schizo by Evan Brunetti and uh, Harvey Picard. But I was so young that I didn't feel like fully formed enough as a human to do that. And I didn't feel unselfconscious enough to do right. a book about myself. So I thought I'm going to make uh, the character a different gender, put it in a different part of the world. I think because I kind of gave myself permission to l let it be something different for me, mm -hmm. I was very able to unconsciously work out a right. lot of stuff in it. In 1993, you never could have imagined that you'd still be doing Kabuki 20 years later. You weren't thinking like that. Yeah, so, yeah. But you've been with this world and these characters for so long. What's it like? being able to go back there over and over again and, and looking back on a life that you've kind of lived through this book. It's almost, every time I look at the book, it's like a different book to me, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I get the impression from different readers that, you know, different readers approach the book at different times in their life and with different baggage and with different perspectives. And a lot of, even from the beginning, I would get feedback from readers mm -hmm. that seemed like they were, they were reading different mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. but, sure. And they were connecting to it at different access points and on different levels. and they found something personal to it, to them in the book, but that was different from what someone else found personal to it. Right. Um, and well, I it's a book that's really open to interpretation, especially as you get further down the line. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and maybe that's because I first started the book at such a formative time in my life where I was kind of working out, who, who me making the book and building the character was also kind of, I was figuring out who I was at the same time and you know, building myself, I yeah. guess, at the same time.